So we're continuing our, our series today called Presidents, Priests, and uh, Pres- Presidents, Prophets, and Kings. I got it wrong like every single week. Presidents, Prophets, and Kings. And we're looking at a story out of 1 Kings. So if you have a Bible, go to 1 Kings chapter 18. And uh, if you don't have a Bible, I encourage you to download Version. It's a, a great Bible app. I read out of the New Living Translation. And so during this series, what we've been talking about is how the answer's not in the White House, the answer's in our house, it's, it's in my house, it's about the people of God, the state of our nation, what's happening, if you're relying on a law or a president or some kind of change like that, it's, it's not going to happen. Those are great, but the real change that we need and that we have to have in our country is going to come from the church. The reason our country is in such a mess right now is because We've been sitting on the sideline, and God is calling all of us to be like Elijah, to be prophets in our neighborhoods, in our workplaces, in our own homes, to call people back to God. So we've been looking at this, and what did Elijah do in this story? Well, we, we're looking at four different ways in which we believe God wants to call us back. One is, is worship. Uh, we talked about, in, in week one, we talked about worshiping in a, in a busy world, in a, in, a, in a crazy, conflicted world. And then the next week, we talked about self-sacrificing in a self-centered world. And today, I want to talk about praying in a panicking world. So we're talking about worship, sacrifice, and today we're talking about prayer. And we come to this prayer in 1 Kings chapter 18. Now, some background if you're just getting up to speed on this series. The nation of Israel thought it'd be a good idea to have a king. And God said, I don't want you to have a king. I want to be your king. But they demanded a king because they said, well, everybody else around us has got a king. Why can't we have a king? So God says, okay, I'll give you a king. And it didn't go well for them. So, in fact, the scripture says that they did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And then the next king came up and it says, they did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And then the next king, they did evil in the eyes of the Lord. It just never worked. Because why? The answer's not in the White House. The answer's in our house. Now, I'm not saying that every president has been evil. Don't misunderstand me on that. Although we've all seen some that kind of, eh, maybe. But, but what we're seeing here in this story is that that's not our answer. So Elijah calls the people back to God, and they had, they had uh, begun idol worship. They were worshiping this God called Baal, and they had shrines and temples, and they were no longer worshiping in the temple, no longer worshiping Yahweh and Jehovah. And so Elijah, who's a prophet, he's like, all right, we're going to have a showdown between the prophets of Baal and God. So all these prophets, hundreds of them gather up on Mount Carmel, and it's hundreds of them against one guy, Elijah. It's one of the greatest showdowns in all of human history. And so Elijah says, you guys go first. And so they pray, they cut themselves, they, they rave. So they have, the, they have a rave party. That doesn't work. Um, they're shouting, nothing, dancing, nothing's working. They're TikTok and videoing it. Nothing's happening, nothing's working. Elijah's mocking them, making fun of them. Finally, it comes to Elijah's turn, and he builds this altar. We talked about this during the series. Built this altar, poured water all over it, had a bowl on it. And then he prayed this prayer. So 1 Kings chapter 18, look with me at verse 36. It says, at the usual time for offering the evening sacrifice, Elijah, the prophet, walked up to the altar and he prayed this prayer. O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, prove today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant. Prove that I've done all of this at your command. O Lord, answer me. Answer me so these people will know that you, O Lord, are God and that you have brought them back to yourself. And then it says, immediately the fire of the Lord flashed down from heaven. And then the people repented. Today I want to talk to you about something that is so desperately needed in these times, praying in a panicking world. Let's pray before we begin. Father, in this moment that we have to gather together, would you just speak to us through your word? And we just commit this time, wherever we are, there's so many distractions, so many things that are calling for our attention right now, but wherever we are gathered, we believe that your spirit can help us. Your spirit can unite our spirits together. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I, uh, I absolutely love coffee. Uh, in fact, in my house, I have a coffee bar. 
Um, although for the sake of church, I should probably say I have a coffee station because as a pastor, I don't have a bar. Uh, I don't have a bar. My, does our pastor have a bar in his home? I can't believe our pastor has a bar in his home. Uh, so I've got this, <laughs> you call it a coffee station if that makes you feel more comfortable. I've got a coffee bar in, in my home. Now let me show you a picture of it. Now there's a reason why I'm showing you this picture. Um, one is simply just to, you know, brag a little bit and say just how amazing is my coffee uh, bar. But the most important thing is in this picture that I want you to see is the two kettles that are hanging because that's key to what I'm about to talk about and the brackets that they are hanging on, okay? So originally I only had the coffee kettle on the left and then I got a new coffee kettle that I wanted to hang on the right but I only had one bracket so I needed to get another one. I wanted to get a matching bracket. So I bought that original bracket from a local hardware store and I don't want to say who they are um, because frankly it was a low point in my week. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> so I, uh, I go to this local hardware store to, to get the matching bracket, but it's actually a plant, planter bracket that you hang plants with, and so it's the end of the season, and they, they don't have it. No, no big deal, no, no problem, no worry. I'll just go to another one of their locations. So I drive across town and go to another one of their locations. They don't have it. At this point, I realize, wait, it's 2020, we have the internet, why am I not using the internet? I'll, I'll go on their site and I'll see if another store has it. Sure enough, over at their Bixby location, I see that they have five of them. I'm like, sweet, five of them, this is great. So I drive over to the Bixby location, go back to where the brackets are. Do you think they had five of them? No, they didn't even have one of them. So I go up to customer service, I'm thinking, okay, right. I'll ask them, hey, it says you have five, and they're not back there, and I had a guy help me, and he couldn't find them anyway, and the manager goes, oh, sir, let me check, and the manager starts to walk off, and I'm like, no, 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 I've already checked. Oh. Okay, fine. So I stand there, and I wait 20 minutes for this manager to come back, and the manager to tell me, yes, sir, I'm sorry, we, we don't have it, we don't have it at any of our stores, in fact, um, I don't even know if we can, we can order it for you, we could try, and I was like, you know what, never mind, so... I went out into my car, and I know, I know you're already way ahead of me. You're thinking, Brad, there's this thing called Amazon. Why didn't you do that? So in my car, in the parking lot of this local hardware store, I just went on Amazon, found two new brackets that matched for the price of the one bracket. And I thought, why did I do that in the first place? So when it comes to prayer, when we're thinking about prayer this morning, I think this is often our approach to prayer with God. We, we, we come to God and we say, okay, God, here's what I need. And then nothing happens. So we come back again and we go, okay, well, maybe if I got on my knees. So I'll pray on my knees and, and nothing happens. And then you think, well, how about I'll go to church. That's what I'll, I'll jump on church online. That's what I'll do because God will see that I'm doing good here. And then I'll pray my prayer and then and nothing happens. You submit a prayer request, and you're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna pray, and have somebody praying every day for 30 days over this need, and I'm praying over it every day for 30 days, and 30 days goes by, and, and nothing happens. And you're like, oh. and what happens? We give up. We just kind of give up on prayer, and we're like, well, I, I, I guess it doesn't work. It works for other people, but it doesn't work for me. Here's the thing I want us to see here today is this, that prayer was never meant to be transactional. Prayer was meant to be relational. So often we make it transactional, that God is like a manager, and, and I go to, or, or God is more like a customer service person, and I, I go to customer service, I go to God, and I say, here's what I need, here's what I need you to replace, here's what I need you to fix, here's what I need you to deliver, and God becomes customer service, or God becomes Amazon, and we expect it in two days, but it doesn't work that way. Does God care about our needs? Absolutely, he cares about our needs, but there's so much more to prayer than just our needs and our requests and what we want and what we desire. Your prayer life can be so much richer and so much fuller if you'll just make it relational. 